for the rest of our tools in the toolbar, I'm going to go ahead and close out this image. And I'm not going to save it. I'm going to go to File, New, and select 800 by 600 preset, and click OK. And now we're going to take a look at uh, mostly path tools and uh, some of the shape tools and, of course, our text editor. Uh, the first tool we have here is our path selection tool and our direct selection tool. Now, these aren't really important right now because we haven't covered paths. But let's take a look at our so let's take a look at our text really quick. And we have our horizontal type tool, vertical type tool, horizontal type mask tool, and vertical type mask tool. Uh, let's take a look at the horizontal type tool first. I'll just go ahead and click in here. And now on the top we have all of our different types of fonts we can choose from. As you can see by clicking on the image what it did was uh, automatically create a text layer on top of our background layer so we can separate what we're working with. And then just like any other text editor we can grab uh, any type of font we have in here. I'll just grab a basic one like Arial. And then we can adjust whether it's regular, italic, bold, or bold italic, the type size, uh, pretty much how many pixels the image is, and then whether it's strong. Uh, these are the different anti-aliasing settings. We have none, sharp, crisp, strong, smooth, and I'll show you those in just in a sec. So I'm going to just type something out really quick. And I'm going to change this to a different font. And just going to type out the old Aslifex logo there. And uh, we have it set to 72 right now. Uh, but that doesn't appear to be big enough. And that's because our DPI is actually set to uh, 72. So if we actually changed our resolution, it would actually affect uh, how large the text uh, point value is. I'm going to bring this up to 150 right now, just because I don't really want to change uh, that value of the DPI of the image. Uh, but we can see we have a lot of fuzziness and a lot of weird looking effect uh, around the image. And that's mostly because but be caused by the fact that we are, are at 66% of the image. If I zoom into 100%, we will see that that is completely crisp and there's no distortion. Let's go back to our text tool. And if we just want to edit that text, all we got to do is click that layer and select the text tool. And now we can go in and just edit any of these values and it'll automatically change this. Uh, to change our anti-aliasing settings, I'm going to go up to none. And now you can see that we have a very jagged edge where there's no anti-aliasing, no smoothing between uh, the colors. We can use sharp, we can use crisp, we can use strong, and we can use smooth. Now, most of these will really show up with smaller fonts. So if you have uh, larger fonts, most of these are pretty much about the same, except for as far as sharp, crisp, strong, and smooth. Uh, but when you're looking at the smaller fonts, you're going to find that uh, you need to really adjust your anti-aliasing settings uh, to get either the font to sort of not stand out so much or to stand out a lot more because uh, actual typing uh, most of it is not anti-aliased when it's at a smaller level especially for certain website stuff and things like that at a 12 point font uh, standard. We have a lot of other types of uh, changes we can do in here too. Uh, we can either center our text and of course uh, we only have really have one word here so we can't really tell how much that's uh, working, but it's just like any other word processing program where we can uh, left justify, center, or right justify uh, our text. And then we can, of course, change our color to any color that we want. And go ahead and change that to uh, green. Click OK. And uh, we don't even have to see the selection, and we don't have to select the area text to change it. Just as long as that layer is selected, then we can actually change the whole layer. If we just want to change one section of the text and change it to its own color, we can select it and change it. And now we have uh, a red and a green in there. And we can actually change individual letters by selecting them and changing their color. So it's kind of a neat thing you can do. I'm going to go. And when you have multiple selected, it will say that your color is a question mark because it's multiples. So I'm going to change that back to black. And let's take a look at some of our actual uh, our other options. Uh, once you select in here, uh, the best thing to do before you start uh, editing anything up here, if you're going to be editing the whole text layer, is just go ahead and click on that text layer again. And that will clear out that selection you have on there. And now let's take a look at 
our warp text. So we'll just go ahead up to the right and click on that. You can select either horizontal or vertical. Uh, of course, right now it's not going to let us it's grayed out because we don't have a style selected. So let's go ahead and select a style. And what we can actually do is set our text to arc. And we can uh, change our modifier so we can bend it, select our horizontal distortion or our vertical distortion, and get some pretty neat text effects in there. Adjust it vertically or horizontally, depending on uh, which way your text is facing. Uh, we can also arc it lower, and it's pretty much the same settings, same tools for vertical, horizontal distortion, and then bend uh, for all of these. Uh, but we can get some really neat looking text effects in here and different warps uh, by using this tool. So you can just go through, and if you ever need, uh, your text to be kind of different, you can go ahead and use this to get some pretty neat looking stuff. It's a pretty neat looking text. So go ahead and just get cancel on that right now so it doesn't save it. And the last thing is uh, toggle the character in paragraph palettes. So in other words we can click on that and now we can adjust all of uh, these settings uh, through an actual panel if you want to have that open. We also have paragraph settings. Uh, if you want to, if you're doing a lot of text and you really need to get more in depth with what it is you're working on. But just close that out right now. Put this down to the bottom. Uh, but now I'm going to delete this text layer. And we're going to take a look at our vertical type tool, which will allow us to just pretty much type vertically. And you can see there's a lot of spacing in between, uh, but it is typing our font out in a certain direction and we can center that and we can align it in different ways just like we did before but it is for vertical text and then we have our horizontal type mask so now we're gonna type out a mask which is going to create a selection okay and we're working on a locked layer so it's not gonna allow us to do this so I'm going to deselect create a new layer and redo that tool on a new layer. Just typing out the logo. And now we can adjust this selection as text. And we could cut out with this or we could uh, paint in if we wanted to. And it's a nice way of working with selection text by creating text and then actually having a selection out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and deselect that. If we go back and create our text layer again, there's a couple things you got to keep in mind. Uh, the main thing is our text layer is not a rasterized image. In other words, uh, we adjust it and it adjusts pretty much a mask. So in other words, uh, it's you'll be able to see a little bit more once we get into the shapes. Uh, but we can't really delete. If I go to use the delete tool, it will not work. And it will give us a warning and saying that it does not work. So if we ever need to actually get into the text and start deleting it, uh, make sure you're at the stage where you're not going to be editing the font anymore and then you can right mouse click on your layer and go to rasterize type and what that's going to do is create an actual bitmap layer where we can go in and actually adjust this accordingly so I could take the eraser tool and erase that I am going to up our opacity level so I can go ahead and actually delete that and that allows us to actually edit the text layer and apply filters and things like that. Otherwise we can't really do it if we're just working with the basic text layer. We have to rasterize it in order to actually physically go in and edit that. So I'll delete that text layer. Right mouse click, go to delete layer. Yes. And now the next thing we're going to look at is our path tool, or the pen tool. Being able to draw out uh, curved shapes with visor splines. And now, I just drew out a few here, uh, but we can edit our different lines here after we've already created them and edit our curves to sort of create the shapes that we want. And what you have to do in order to get this to happen is you will hold down the control key and when you hold down control it will allow you to edit these options. If you hold down, uh, different keys will also create do different things. Uh, we can of course keep clicking and create more or we can hold down alt and actually uh, get in there and actually edit them. And you can go back and delete them. 
hold down shift you get a very straight 45 degree angle depending on where I was clicking from or just any straight angle I didn't get some pretty neat uh, looking shapes in there hold down alt and then I can go ahead and adjust these handles and sort of the curvature of our path and now the path tool uh, creates of course our path so if we go over here to the path we can see that we have shape one vector mask because what it's actually doing is creating a mask and it's not really creating the shape which is why we can still edit it because we're adjusting uh, pretty much a different type of layer and you can see the way a mask is uh, created we have a black which is the color that we had selected uh, pretty much the whole uh, layer is black and then the white area that we have here is another image which is cutting out that area of the black or it's just kind of inverted in this case uh, because it's go going into itself in and out uh, but it's a mask so if we want to edit this we really can't so if we go to use the eraser tool that's not going to work just like the text so what we have to do is right mouse click and go to rasterize layer but you want to make sure that it's finished before you do this you want to make sure that you don't need to edit any more curves or what you can do is take a snapshot before you go and do it and that way you can get back to the previous state you're at but now we can go in and use the eraser tool and uh, edit this path that we've created and there's also other things we can do with paths I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this layer really quick uh, but I'm gonna create something simple with the pen tool and then we're gonna go back to our text I'm gonna leave this alone and I'm gonna pull up our text button here and as you can see when I move the text layer onto this curve we get a different type of uh, icon showing up so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and what we can actually do is type in text along our uh, path and it's not really showing up because we have it too large uh, but we can see it's actually adjusting and moving along the path so I'm going to rasterize that and I'm gonna go back to uh, another part of our image text tool and we can select this layer and right now it's not really snapping onto that uh, whether or not that's a bug I'm not sure I'm gonna try to do it again just so we can go back and kinda see how that works because that's gonna work with our paths and that's a pretty neat little tool to have around okay so we'll just set that up and I'll just end that over there and select our text tool once again come up in the top and now we can see we have our defined area of text that is going to show up and I can type in uh, the logo and now we can see it's conforming perfectly to this path so we can go along and uh, type in more if we wanted to along the rest of the path or define uh, exactly how long this path is we can use some of our path editing tools for that uh, we can add anchor points, delete anchor points, so let's say we wanted to uh, actually edit this path once again I can hold down controller alt pen tool <laughs> click and select and now we can edit our paths once again and our text will not update in this case we can create a new layer and then we can use our other tools in here to either add an anchor point uh, within a shape or we can uh, click delete anchor point so that we're when we're working on uh, a multiple object here we can just go ahead with the delete anchor point tool on we can come in here and just click on an anchor point and it'll delete it and make our shape smaller okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and just delete <laughs> pretty much all of these settings and go back to the beginning uh, we're at a new state and now it's the same thing with our shapes uh, if we go over right next to it we have our shape tools we have a rectangular tool rounded rectangular tool ellipse polygon tool line and custom shape tool we select a rectangular tool and create a box it's going to create that mask once again uh, just like it did with the path and just like it pretty much does with our text so if we want to edit this box uh, after creating it we have to right mouse click and go to rasterize layer and it works the same with all of our objects we also have a rounded rectangle tool which is pretty neat because we can adjust the radius 
change that to 50 and create another one. And now we get a much uh, larger rounded edge on there. And of course, this is all creating uh, paths. So if we go to the path, we can see our vector masks in there, all showing up under our path selection. And we have our ellipse tool. If we hold down shift, we of course can create a perfectly round sphere or circle. And then we have our polygon tool where we can select uh, different shapes. We can select how many sides we want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and change our color so we can start seeing these new shapes in here. I'm going to change this to a, let's say, 12 sided. And because these are white and actually above, so pull this up so we can create a polygon that way. And then we also have the line tool. Line tool is pretty neat because we can actually define uh, perfectly straight lines holding on shift and then we can even adjust the pixels and let's say we want it to be 12 pixels and create a line of 12 pixels or we can make that 5 make it a little bit smaller or of course 1 pixel and create a very small line and like I said these are all shapes so these are masks and these all need to be rasterized. Uh, custom shape tool we can select um, preset shapes that are already in uh, by right mouse clicking or we could add more there's a whole bunch of different uh, shapes we can add in here let's go to banners append and now we have the banners in there we can go to talk bubbles append and now we can see those shapes in here so we can just draw out those shapes that we want we can see in the path right now we'll go back to that black color bring it up a little bit higher and we can see those kind of show up so neat little shape tool uh, it has the same options as a lot of the other ones and we can of course change this up here to uh, basic symbols copyright trademark uh, any symbol that you don't normally have and of course to get a perfect shape you'll have to hold down shift and click and pull that out now another thing I'm gonna pull out our layers tool here really quick our layers panel and make it a little bit larger you can see we have a whole bunch of shape layers we created in here now let's say we wanted this all to just be one layer and we just wanted to rasterize all of it we don't need to edit anything else what we can actually do is right mouse click and go to rasterize layer on the top and then I'm gonna hold, scroll down hold down shift and click to the bottom and all we have to do now since this top one is rasterized if I hit control E which is gonna merge down layers or merge layers selected layers uh, all of these will all be rasterized at once and converted into one layer. So control E and what that does is it's created one layer out of it and we no longer have any paths anymore. And we have this uh, just one shape layer. Of course you want to do that after you've already edited everything but that just goes ahead and compresses it all down into something that's a little more workable. We we'll change our workspace back to that default to get that back in the right location. I'm going to go ahead and close that out really quick. And we can just take a look at some of our other options in here. Uh, we can add notes if we wanted to uh, within the program. Uh, so if we want to just have a little editable note, we can click on it. And it says uh, the user that created the note. So that's kind of a neat thing. We have our eyedropper tool, our color sampler tool, measure tool that we can use. And those are all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we'll take a look at some of these tools in here and I'll just paint something out so that we can see the way the eyedropper tool will work. Select the eyedropper and then we can select any color within our image and we also have our color sampler tool which will give us uh, pretty much a point sample. Okay right now we have four points and it's going to give us our values all within the info of what each sample is, which is kind of neat. Or we can do a 5x5 five five average, which will give us the average color uh, within that area. And I keep clicking more, so it <laughs> keeps popping up. And we also have our measure tool, which will allow us to measure and show us in the info exactly what it is we're measuring uh, with height, uh, whether it's in pixel or not, and all of our different settings that we have here for coordinates, and of course our angle, diameter, or sorry, not diameter, but uh, just our angle in there. And of course the distance between each point. So that's a neat little tool to have. Uh, we also have our move tool here. And our hand tool allows us to sort of uh, roll across the image. Of course right now it's 
too big, but if we move, use the hand tool, uh, once it's shrunk down, you can see it's just moving these bars for us. And then, of course, the magnification tool, which we can select to zoom in closer if we wanted to, or actually define an area that we want zoomed into. We go back to our navigator, pull it back up, and we can zoom out. And then, of course, we have our foreground color and our background color. We can change that to the default. And then we have our edit in standard mode, or we can edit in quick mask mode. I'm going to select uh, our different modes here by opening up a document first so we can actually work with it. Click OK. And now we have our two separate modes, quick mask and then our standard mode. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. But we also have uh, some more things with standard screen mode, which we're in right now. Or we can select full screen mode with menu bar. So that's the whole thing goes full screen and it might be a little bit easier to edit your images that way and then we just have uh, just full screen mode which is going to show the uh, without our file and all of other things so that if you know a lot of keyboard shortcuts then you can use that and then of course we have our Photoshop to image ready button down on the bottom so that pretty much concludes our toolbar and we'll get back into uh, more in depth with some of these as we start working around different projects. Uh, but you have a pretty basic idea now of how all these tools work. And of course if you ever need help you can also uh, click uh, on this button up on top to go to the Adobe site and you can always get help that way too. So that's a nice little part that's in our toolbar. Go ahead and close that out and now we're going to move on to our next part of Photoshop.